Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about culling. Culling is a technique to make sure that the scene is always rendered correctly as it should be rendered. Culling makes sure that the correct objects properly occlude other objects or other parts of other objects. It also ensures that you only see the correct things that you should see from the camera view perspective. And last but not least, it's also often used for increasing the rendering performance. Knowing about the different techniques of culling is very important for a game developer and every game developer should at least heard about these techniques once. Also, if you like this video and want to see more awesome videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Okay, let's jump straight into the action. Before you can understand what culling is, I need to explain you how game objects are actually created or how 3D models are actually created and rendered. Every 3D model consists out of multiple vertices, which are just coordinates in a three-dimensional room. I know these dots here that are representing the vertices are pretty big, but this is just because of my editing tool. Imagine a vertex to be unlimited small because it's just one precise coordinate in a three-dimensional room. Okay, and all of these vertices are connected via edges. You can imagine an edge as a line between two vertices. And these vertices and edges form together a face in the three-dimensional room. These faces are called polygons. A polygon consists out of a minimum of three edges and three vertices, but it can also consist out of four, five, or even more edges and vertices. But most 3D modelers try to stick to triangles or squares for the polygons. Okay, as I mentioned before, there are different techniques under the umbrella term culling. There's view frustrum culling, there's clipping, backface culling, hierarchical culling, z-buffering, and occlusion culling. I will talk about view frustrum culling first. In computer graphics, the view frustrum is the view of the player, and it has an end because you can't view unlimited far into the distance. This field of view of a perspective virtual camera is typically formed as a cone. It has a near and a far plane, and objects beyond the far plane or closer to the camera than the near plane are not rendered. Every object that is outside of this cone of vision will not be rendered. Now because objects consist out of so many polygons, it would come with a very high performance cost to check for each polygon if it's inside or outside the view frustrum. And this is why the algorithm will create a bounding volume around these objects and only check if the bounding volume is outside the view frustrum or inside the view frustrum. Like this, it's much easier because it only needs to check for the bounding volume and not for each polygon inside the object. Typically, these bounding volumes will be very simple shapes. The most algorithms are using cubes or spheres. As you can see here on our sketch, our view frustrum cuts one of the bounding boxes from our trees. This is basically an example for the only case when the algorithm will check for each polygon if it's inside or outside the view frustrum, and that's because it cut the bounding box of our object. And the reason for that is very easy and logical, because if our view frustrum cuts the bounding box of one object, this object will maybe be only part on the screen and part outside the screen. So maybe some polygons are inside our view and some polygons are outside of our view. And that's why in this case it needs to check for each polygon if it's inside or outside our view frustrum. In case part of a polygon is outside the view frustrum and part of it is inside the view frustrum, a new technique comes into play and we need to use clipping. In these cases, all vertices and parts of edges that are outside the view frustrum will be removed and new vertices at the latest point of the edge that is still inside the view frustrum will be created. In some algorithms, the vertices will be shifted into their new position. And in the last part, every algorithm will create new edges if necessary, so all vertices are connected. And then we have formally correct polygons again. The next technique that we will talk about is called backface culling. To understand backface culling, you need to understand how normals work. Every polygon has a normal that is going straight out of it in a 90 degree angle to its face. Every polygon has a front and a back side. And the normal is only standing straight in this 90 degree angle on the front side. The back side has no normals. 
If you have a correctly modeled 3D object, the normals should always face to the outside of the object, never to the inside of the object. And here's why. The backface culling algorithm always removes all polygons that have their normals facing away from the current camera view. So in our example here, only two normals are facing away from the camera. And as you can see, this algorithm works perfectly because the two polygons that have the normals facing away from the camera are also these two polygons that are not visible by the player anyways. So for this frame, these two faces don't need to be rendered and will be removed from the scene. And now you can see why it's so important to have a correctly modeled 3D model with their normals of the polygons facing always to the outside of the model, because if they are facing to the inside of the model, the player will just see through the polygon and will not see the polygon at all. Okay, now that you know the basic techniques for culling, let's dive into something that is more performance optimized, hierarchical culling. To increase the performance even further, people thought it would be a great idea to automatically create even bigger bounding volumes around large collection of objects. And now only if the big parent bounding volume is cut by the view frustum, it will check for the child bounding volumes inside if these are cut by the view frustum as well. So in this example, we have a big bounding volume around this big mountain with four trees on it. And for this example, it's outside of the view frustum. So it only needed to check if the mountain is inside or outside. And if the mountain is completely outside, it didn't need to check for all the trees on the mountain if they are inside or outside as well. No, it just needed to do one check and that's it. Let's do another example. So in this case, the dotted line is the new view frustum of our player. So in this case, it's cutting the mountain bounding volume. So it needs to check for all child objects inside the mountain bounding volume if they are cut as well. Now the algorithm finds out that one of the trees is cut by the view frustum as well and is not completely in or outside the view frustum. So now it needs to check for each polygon inside the 3D model of the tree if it's inside or outside the view frustum. And if a polygon is cut by the view frustum as well, then it needs to start the clipping algorithm. The next algorithm that we're going to talk about is set buffering. Set buffering is used to check which object is covering another object and which object shall be drawn to the screen. In this example, we have two cubes. One is orange and one is purple. And from our camera view, the orange one is covering up a bit of the purple one. Now the algorithm will check which object is closer to our camera view on the local Z axis of our camera. The orange cube has the position 2 at our Z axis and the purple cube has the position 1. So the orange cube is closer to our camera than the purple cube. For every pixel, the camera will check of all of these objects that could be visible in this pixel, which object is closest to the camera. And then this object will be rendered. So the object maybe covers some other objects that are behind it. And this is how coverage works. Okay, and for the final technique for this video, let's talk about occlusion culling. Occlusion culling is the art of hiding an object which is behind another object. And by hiding, I mean removing the object out of the rendering process for all the other algorithms as well. So if you use occlusion culling to say that the object is behind another object with 100% certainty, then you will remove this object out of the rendering process and the other algorithms will not even consider that this object can be rendered, so it will not even be considered for a draw call. And for scenes with many objects, this will make a big performance difference. For this algorithm, we talk about occluders, which are objects that can hide other objects that are from the point of view behind them, and occludees, that are objects that can be hidden in the scene by occluder objects. For occlusion culling, you should mostly use static non-moving objects. So as you can see, both occlusion culling and the Z-buffer algorithm are checking which objects are hiding or covering other objects from the camera view. But the difference between occlusion culling and the Z-buffer algorithm is that the occlusion culling algorithm will check which object is completely hidden by another object or completely covered by another object and therefore completely hidden for the camera view anyways, and it will remove this object from the rendering process completely. 
So the rendering process will not even consider a draw call for this object. And then when the Z-Buffer algorithm is called, it has much less work because it only needs to decide which part of an object covers another part of an object, but it don't needs to decide which object is completely hidden because those objects were already removed from the rendering process by the occlusion culling algorithm. In this video, I just want to quickly cut on cell-based occlusion culling, which is a way to do occlusion culling. And in this way of occlusion culling, the scene will be cut in different cells and all of these cells will be connected to each other via portals. A few examples for portals could be an open door, an open gate or a window. Basically, the cell-based occlusion culling algorithm works like this. If you are inside the cell, it will only consider all objects inside the cell and the cell itself for rendering. All other cells and objects inside the other cells, it will not consider for rendering at all. Then it will check if your cell has any portals connecting it to other cells. And if yes, it will check if one of these portals is inside of your view frostum or if it's cut by your view frostum. If yes, then it will consider the other cell that is connected to your cell via that portal for rendering as well. And then for the next cell, it will check as well if one of these portals from the next cell is cut by our view frostum or inside our view frostum. And if yes, it will check the other cell that is connected via this portal as well, and so on. And after that, it will have a number of cells that can be considered for rendering. And all other cells and all objects inside the other cells will not be considered for rendering at all. So the rendering process will be much faster and the performance will be much higher. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you understood everything and I see you next time. Welcome to the end of this video. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated. Also, if you need some high quality assets for your game or like our channel and want to support us, feel free to check out our assets at the Unity or Unreal Asset Store. you find the link to our store pages in the description. I hope you learned something new and see you next time.